with me now, AFC Wimbledon assistant manager Terry Skiverton. Terry, unbeaten since the start of pre-season. Boys must be absolutely aching to get back out there after a week on the training pitch. Yes, it's um, it's almost been a one of you know keeping the reins on them. I think you can see even from the session today, the boys are very buoyant. Um, you know, when you are on a good run, there seems to be clarity. The mood's better. Um, people that may have not been starting are still seeing. You know, they're they're the next ones in. So the group's really tight, and we need to make sure that we we stay on top of it, but also giving them. You know, when they are on the front foot, is letting them express themselves and letting them be, you know, enjoy this moment. But the games come round quick, and we're on the back of a we're on the back of a tough period, and it's, it's going to get even tougher now. So we've had a little bit of a rest and a recover with no midweek game, but the boys are focused and ready for tomorrow. When it's going well from a coach's point of view, is it easier or is it more difficult because you're trying to keep them in that particular zone? I think the biggest thing that you always think about in the back of your mind is complacency, making sure that you know the lads don't get too sort of giddy and um, you know enjoy it too much. We still want it to be competitive, you know, loads of blocking, tackling, you know, real good sort of hurt runs forward, sprint recoveries. So to make them do that, we have, we've got to stay on it and we've got to make sure that we drive standards. And um, but it's getting that balance right. So we're mindful of it, but we're always you know always trying to embrace both. Set pieces in particular at the moment, they're going very well for us and we spend a particular time devoted to that in each training session, don't we? We do, yeah, we, from everything really, from our goal kicks to our defensive throws, attacking throws. Every time, you know, there's 40 to 60 restarts within a game, so that's 40 times when you have the ball and when you haven't got the ball. So you need to make sure that, you're, you know, there's clarity and we're organised in both. So for us, it's, it's spending enough time on it without them getting bored but making sure that we touch on the things that are important to the game. So we, we, we devote a lot of time to that. And the gaffer, you know, he, he, Rob takes a lot of responsibility of that, but, you know, he's been excellent in the way that he delivers. Um, and, and we feel that with the recruitment that we've had, we've got some real big, strong players that are committed to winning the ball in both boxes. And we'll certainly need that again uh, against Forest Green on Saturday. Forest Green Rovers, the visitors tomorrow, of course, they're still adjusting to life in League Two. Third from top versus third from bottom. Troy Deeney's come in there as well. What have you made of them? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's an, we've been in that situation ourselves when we, when we came down last season. And um, me and the gaffer know what that's like, but we also know that there was a turning point within that period. And um, they're a good side, they've got some good players. Players that I know, obviously, Ryan Innes. Um, I know Troy Deeney as well through, um, through mutual friends, a player called Rennie Kilmartin uh, and he's a lovely guy but he's a real, real competitor and with him coming into the team and coming into the squad he certainly brings that experience and you know they've had a few sending offs which hasn't helped in recent games but their last win was an away game so we're, you know, we're focused on making sure that we carry out all of the stuff that helps us win games focus really heavily on ourselves, but also know about what we're up against. And um, you know, they're a really good football inside that's adjusting to the level. But we need to make, we need to make sure that we bring our, our, our A game and make sure that our performance levels are as high as what they have been and we don't fall into that trap of complacency. It was a real pleasure speaking to Aaron Sasso in the build-up to this one as well. He's only 18 years old, but his focus is very much on what's happening this weekend. Yeah, I, I think that's... Because of what the gaffer's instilled, you know, there's uh, no talk of next week, and um, the manager's been really focused in making sure that the lads go into this game tomorrow, and we are fighting, we're blocking, we're tackling, and we're running. So if anybody's got their mind on anything else, they won't be playing in the other game. So for us, it's all guns blazing for Saturday, and then on Sunday we can sort of refocus and rejig, which we do for every other game. So no game's going to be focused on more than the game that's in front of us. And for us, it's a really big, real important week within the league season. And that even goes for you as well, even with the obvious connection to, to in your playing career as well. Yeah, not allowed to talk about it. If I mention it to the gaffer, he'll, I don't think I'll go. So, um, no, all focus is on tomorrow. We want to give our supporters that feeling that we had in the, especially the last couple of away games. And we want to give them that feeling to go home of, you know, when they're out of their seats and you know the support's behind us like what it has been ever since we've come back, there's a different feel about the whole place. And we need to make sure that we're creating a performance and an energy about us 
that gets the crowd off their seats early. And I feel we've been doing that and you know we're, we're focusing on making sure that we get that special feeling at the lane. One thing I did want to mention to you about the C word, Chelsea, um, Mason Bearstone made his Premier League debut last weekend as well in relevance to us too. I mean, that must give you a lot of pride and also particularly the gaffer as well, seeing a play about their commitment to youth and what you can develop. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a real big foundation and it's one of the cornerstones of this football club is our youth set up and our system. Um, what we can't do is ignore that and just try and bring in too many players. We've got to make sure that we get the balance right because of the, the, the module that this club's been set up on. And if they're good enough, they're going to be involved. And um, Aaron Sasu has been, you know, you've got Paris Locke, you've got Morgan Williams. They've all been chomping at the bit but they've been showing that they're up to the standard as well. I think in you know, recent seasons gone by, it's been so flooded the other way, is that when players weren't ready, they were still thrown into action. And um, you know, there's, there's consequences that normally are attached to that, which is a losing run, uh, not many wins, and we're focused on making sure that the balance is right between our youth and our experienced players. And we, and we feel we've bridged this gap this window, but we've got to make sure that these players that keep developing and, and go on to become, you know, real legends and leave a legacy behind at the football club or, you know, they we wish them well and they get you know, they get interest from other clubs and their development goes that way. So manager's big on developing its own youth. That's why we've not had so many loans this year, because um, we've got some real good talent within the building already. In terms of team news for tomorrow as well, I mean there isn't really any, is there? I mean you've got everybody virtually back, Paul Callum by Jack Curry, Hussain Bidder, all making progress outdoors. Yeah, more, more academy graduates. So, exactly. um, yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll be back soon. They're out on the grass, just finishing off their little individual bits before they come in to do um, sort of non-contact training and then they'll be fully involved. So they're just around the corner. We, we can't wait to have them back because of the impact that they all had um, for this football club in their debut seasons. Not so much PK, but the other two. And I know with their character, they all can't wait to get back and be on the grass with the boys. I mean, PK joined in with the boxes and that today, so it was it was really good to see him back on the grass because it was a it was a bit of a naughty injury that he did pick up. Injuries are going to happen, but I mean, even at this stage in the season, it's a it's a nice headache to have in terms of player selection for yourselves. Yeah, and and they and they're excellent players, and they will all bring something different to the party. And when they come back, we want it to almost be like we're bringing in three new signings because they're going to give that energy within the squad. Um, but lucky for us, they know the way we play, they know everything about the club and they're already, you know, they, they bleed blue and yellow. And um, they're all for this football club, so it'd be excellent and we can't wait to have them back. It really is a settled squad at the moment, but I mean, obviously the inevitable questions keep coming up between now and the, the closing of the window. Do you anticipate much action incomings, outgoings between then? I think we're in a good place and the squad's in a good place, but I think we all know where we're a little bit thin uh, and where we need a little bit of help. So there's discussions that's going on, but unless it's the right fit and unless it's better than what we've already got, I think we'll, we'll be passing up on a lot of opportunities. But if something jumps out and us that, um, that the club feel it's right to move forward with, I still think there would be room to do some business. Brilliant. Thanks very much indeed for your time, Terry. No problems.